subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. If you are looking for a place to enjoy your lessons, then it is Joy Learning Channel. Here I am again, Wisdom Agresignal as Wizzy One, bringing you away chemistry lessons. And this one is for you, the newcomers, the form ones, as they refer to you, the greenhorns. <laughs> Don't worry, you will grow very soon. So it's dedicated for you to prepare yourself as you are on break get the videos on all social media platforms study them they are going to stay at home for eight weeks that is why you need joy learning channel yes enjoy all the subjects you want all the subjects irrespective your 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 core subjects are there your elective subjects are there so with me, it is chemistry. Yes, chemistry. Join me. And as you have already been in school, very soon you start your lab work. And you have to go to the lab. And you are going to use chemicals. In our homes, mommy buys something. The name is there. It, if it is oil, what kind of oil? Phyto is there, it's written. The same thing when we come to the lab too, we have names of chemicals that we use in the lab. And there are some signs and symbols on those things we use in the lab. And when you see the sign, the sign gives you an idea how to store that chemical and how to handle that chemical. Sit back, come with me as we look at hazard symbols, their significance and their meanings. So anytime you see it on any label, is it at home, wherever, on the street, wherever, you know that that thing must be handled with care. Just an opening ceremony, the laboratory is a place with many hazards and potentially dangerous materials gathered in a small area. Yet human activities such as preparations by teachers and technicians for experiments are carried out there by the teachers themselves and students. So when we want to bring you into the lab, we do the preparations. Unless we want you to, to witness how preparations are done in the lab, then we can bring you in and show you, if I want to do this, I have to do that, I have to do that to get this. But other than that, every preparation is done for you. So when you enter the lab, the only thing you have to do is to make use of the things that have been prepared by your teacher or the technician. Items in the laboratory include equipment, instruments, storage, furniture, chemicals, and gas, water, and electricity supply points. These are in the lab. And if we go home, you can identify gas supply point. That is your gas cylinder. LPG, then you have water supply point and we have electricity supply point. So we have it also in the lab. So they are not things that are so new and strange to you. You know them from home. They are not so different from what you knew from home. Chemicals. Everything you use at home is a chemical substance. That is why in dealing with them, you have to deal with them with care, irrespective, whether it is edible or not edible. Dangers and hazards may be natural, 
coming from all the items in the laboratory or created by people performing experiments. In my lab, I demonstrated to my students using copper in concentrated HNO3. The observation was a brown gas and then resulting blue solution. You see, this brown gas is toxic. My aim was to show them how beautiful chemistry is. And this brown gas is denser than air. And before them, I poured the gas into another container. See, so if we do that one, it means that this brown gas will be released into the lab. And higher concentration might be toxic to us. That is why you must be careful. So this is for you, the student. Do not enter the lab without any supervisor there. If your teacher is not there, don't enter. If the lab technician is not there, don't enter. Because you don't know the state of the lab at that time. No technician, no teacher will expose you to danger because you are dear to our hearts. So wait for every instruction from your teacher because of dangers and hazards. What then is hazard? So we want to define what hazard is. A situation that poses a level of threat to life health, property, or the environment. So it is not only in the lab that we experience hazard. Life itself, something can threaten it, and that is hazard. Your health can be threatened, and that is hazard. So we say a situation It can be a substance. So in that case, then we will describe that substance as hazardous substance. So this is also telling us that if this is the definition of hazard, then it is not only in the laboratory, even in our homes, as we walk along the street, even as we, we are in our classrooms, even as we move about, on campus, in our homes. So long as that thing can pose a level of threat to life, to health, property, and the environment, is a hazard. Or it is a source of danger that puts health, safety, property, or the environment at risk. A source of danger. Am I safe to walk through campus in the night? If not, there is somebody who can just jump on me and attack me. It's a source of hazard. Because it is putting my life at risk. So these hazards are in the lab everywhere. That is why we must be careful in all we do. What then is hazardous material? Any material or substance that even in normal use, normal use, poses risk to health, safety, property, or the environment. And so it means that this is not only the lab. Society as a whole, the world as a whole, our home, your home, my home, on the street, wherever, there are hazardous materials. Because even in normal use, 
So let's say, for example, you are using your gas stove in your kitchen. Normal use. It's a hazardous material. Because the gas can suddenly start leaking and it can catch fire, leading to fire outbreak. And it can destroy life and property. Your plate is a hazardous material because as you are, even as you are washing, it can break, it can shatter and cut you. Even in normal use, that is why to us, carefulness is our key. Let's look at hazard symbols. Labels that have special information outlined regarding the safe use and handling of the materials or substances on which they are found. We see this one a lot in the lab. Or if you go to buy some chemical substances, caustic soda, ammonia, bleach, are some I have seen some product I have seen those things those symbols are not there to caution us we use it anyhow we are waiting until something happens before we take precautions if you have bleach at home it's a chemical substance you have to handle it with care don't expose it to children. Don't just smell it for smelling's sake. Carefulness. So when you see the labels, the labels have information or the sign alone should give you an information. It's a source of communication from the manufacturers of our chemical substances. What are these symbols? So let's look at the importance of the hazard symbols. Number one, pre-informs how the substance should be handled and used. As I gave you the example of bleach at home. So with the sign, it will tell you that this one, you must handle it this way. This one, you must not use it too much. You must use it in little amount. Number two, prevent or minimizes accidents. So that's why I said, don't go and be smelling bleach. It's not good. So when you are using it, be careful using it. You can have a pair of hand gloves. You can have your nose mask on. When you are using bleach, it can be a source of poison. Number three, pre informs how the substance should be stored and cared for. Some of these things in our household products, they are written. They are not in the form of symbols. So they are written so you can read them. And that, to all of us, students, non-students, Parents, whenever you are buying something, take your time. Read whatever is on it before you decide. Don't say that because I see my friend using it, I'm also going to use it. No. They are all chemical substances. And chemical substances, they have a level of toxicity. So as for me, I said that, Everything has a level of toxicity. Yes, that is why when whatever you are handling, you handle it with care. Whether it is edible or not edible. So the old adage, use it at a minimal quantity. Everything, uh, uh, too much of everything is bad, right? Yes. So take note, this one is free consultation. Let's continue. 
The first one has that symbol. This one is a health hazard. You can see that it's on the chest of the human being. So it means that it affect, it can affect our respiratory system. It can cause cancers and so on and so forth. So when you see this symbol on any product, you must be careful. You can handle it with bare hand because some, when you get it into the hand, it can diffuse through your skin and of course into your bloodstream. So you must handle it. Maybe you, are, you have to use a pair of hand gloves. Maybe you have to have your nose mask on. Now COVID has made it possible we can use nose mask, mask anytime we want. <laughs> so you use your nose mask. What are the examples associated benzene, naphthalene balls, cadmium, formaldehyde, vinyl chloride, ionizing radiation, hydrogen peroxide, and so on, are associated with this kind of symbol? Sometimes, as I said already, it is written, so you will not see this symbol. That is why you have to read. Whatever you are going to buy, read everything on then you decide to buy or not to buy. Health effects in humans, including cancer, gene mutation, reproductive health effect, respiratory sensitivity, and organ toxicity are associated with the symbol we have there. So as for us, in the laboratories, we are always exposed to these things. So to the form ones, you may not be exposed to them because your teachers are there to guide you, your lab technician is there to guide you. But wherever you see it, as you go higher and higher in your education, you will come face to face with these things. That is why Joy Learning wants to bring it to you first before you get there. The next one is this one. This one is highly flammable if you are very observant. You see those trucks who carry petrol, they carry LPG or those, it is there, drawn on the container. That even if the card is passing, you see the sign. Some, they write it highly flammable. So this is the sign representing it. You know example already. The gas LPG in our home is highly flammable. Petrol, highly flammable. You see, diesel, highly flammable. Then we have our spirit. You call it spirit. <laughs> Those that are used for hand sanitizers, rubbing alcohol, we call it rubbing alcohol, is volatile. So if you are using it, don't use it near a naked flame. Otherwise, it can easily spark into fire. Carefulness. So methanol, acetone, propane, butane, zinc powder, phenolphthalein, they are all highly flammable. So these people, number one, some are pyrophoric. These people, or this kind of chemical, when you expose them to air, they can easily spark fire. We may not have these substances in our senior high school lab. But we may have them in the higher institutions. That's why we are bringing it to your way. Some are self-heating. Some are self-reactive. Some emit flammable gases. So all these ones, when you are handling them, you have to be careful. So this lesson is not for you from once alone. Even 
our teachers, our lab technicians, is good for them. Because they come into contact with these chemicals as they are preparing for your safety. They will prepare before you come. So teachers and lab technicians, piece of information for you. Enjoy learning channel. <laughs> This exclamation sign can involve a lot, lot, lot of chemicals. This, when you see it on a chemical, then it means that that chemical is acutely toxic or can cause narcotic effects. The narcotic effect, you inhale the chemical and then you feel dizzy, you are hallucinating, you feel drowsy and so on and so forth. It also indicates that a chemical may cause skin eye respiratory irritation. So it means that this symbol can cover all other symbols. So when you see the exclamation sign on a chemical bottle, it means that it involves a lot of signs that this that is warning. So when you are handling it, you must be highly careful because it can be corrosive, it can be irritating, it can cause a lot of some respiratory disorders and so on and so forth. This is corrosive and as you can see the chemical is being poured out of test tubes onto a hand and onto a metal. It means that they can corrode your hands or you can experience burns when it comes into contact with your skin. And then if it pours on metals, it can also corrode the metal. So this one alone, when we see this, when you want to handle it, the first thing that should come into your mind is a pair of hand gloves. The second thing, you may want to put on your nose mask because there are fumes that comes out of these bottles containing chemicals with this sign. It can be concentrated acids. When you open concentrated acid, it can give you a lot of fumes. Concentrated bases, they can also cause harm. So examples are here. Move removers, these ones are household products, drain cleaners, household products, and it's in our homes. So when you are using them, you may not have the symbol on these household items, but the manufacturer will write. So you read and know how to handle it. These chemicals may cause skin burns, skin corrosion, and could be harmful to the eyes. Some of the chemicals, ammonia, if it enters your eyes, you will produce a lot of tears. It irritates your eyes, and then you'll be tearing, as if you are crying or weeping. This also indicates that the chemical is corrosive to metal that sign with a hand chemical pouring on the hand and is dissolving eating the hand eating the metal it means that that chemical is corrosive this is oxidizing a sign when you see this sign on any chemical substance it means it is oxidizing take note Sometimes these things are drawn for you to identify them. So look at it carefully. The oxidizing is flame on a cycle. If you don't take care, you will confuse it with highly flammable. This is highly flammable. And then the other one is oxidizing. So you take your time and see the difference well. So we have potassium tetra, also manganate 7, as a typical example. This one, no matter what, as student, you come into contact with it, you come into contact with 
potassium, heptaozo, chromate 6, you come into contact with this. This KMNO4 is purple, and this potassium dichromate is orange. Then we have the triozonitrate. Five acid is colorless. We have sodium triozonitrate five. That is a salt solid substance. When you dissolve it, it forms colorless solution. Then we can also have potassium tri also nitrate 5. It's also a salt. When you dissolve it, it will also form colorless solution. So when you see these signs, you know how to handle the chemicals inside the container. This is <laughs> the head with two bones crossed. They can, you can also have something like that. This is the old symbol. So this is danger. This is toxic. This is harmful. So it means that when you see this, it means that it means it can be harmful, it can be toxic, it can be life-threatening. So you know how to handle them. So examples, we have organic solvents. We can talk about benzene. Benzene is an organic solvent. You can talk about that ita, ita is also an organic solvent, ethanol, organic solvent, and so on and so forth. Ion 3, tetra also surface 6, is harmful. Sodium triazo nitrate 5, manganese 4 oxide. Lead to bromide. Please, these are just examples. There are thousands of thousands of thousands of chemicals associated with all the symbols that we are looking at here. So these examples are just for you in case somebody asks you to name one chemical associated with this particular symbol, then you should be able to do explanation in class. That's all about it. So when you want to handle them, you have to wear a pair of gloves, eye protection. You want to use respirator or a full hazmat suit. Please, all this we are doing here, they are the ideal situations. But do we have them in our labs? Oh, no. No, no, no. We don't have them. But as learners, young learners, we will not expose you to all these things. But we instructors and technicians, we are in contact with them. And we know how to handle them very well. This is biohazard. It means that it is environmentally hazardous. Paint and dyes, pesticide, biocides, petrol, turpentine, or turpentine, crude oil, they can harm the environment. So in the other video, safety precautions in the lab, we talked about safety being triangular. Your action affects me. My action affects you. Our action affects the environment. And so that makes chemistry social. Because my activity, no matter what, you can say that that's for you, you don't care about anything. Wherever I am, my action can affect you negatively. That is why when we drink sachet, then the rubbers, we gather them, go and dump them into our drains. I drink, I gather it well for recycling. 
then it rains heavily. Then the whole joy studio is flooded. I will be affected. Meanwhile, I didn't contribute to anything. But we here will be affected. Your action. So, your action should be all about safety. My action should be all about safety. Safe environment for all. That's all. That's how we enjoy chemistry. Right, so, so that's, it means that whatever we do, it will affect the environment. You will not get fish to eat. If you do things, you pollute the water bodies, the oceans, the seas. You will not get fish. All the plants will die. And if the plants die, you can just imagine. It means we will not get oxygen. So we have to save our environment. Climate change, we have, what action can I put in place to save my environment? What action can you put in place to save your environment? What action can we all put in place to save our environment, safe environment for all? Maybe we have to form a club. Yes, we enjoy learning. Studios will form a club and will come to your schools. Safe our now, now our our slogan will be safe environment for all. Don't you see that is is a good thing? Okay. <laughs> Let's continue. Yeah, so it's it's very, very important. This one is gas cylinder. And you have this at home, your LPG. It's the gas under pressure. So when you are home, you see there are a lot of hazards, hazardous substances around us every day. Right. This explosive or explosion hazard, fireworks. So fireworks, it has to do with explosion. When it is festive occasion, we are in the Easter season. I'm sure very soon we'll be hearing them cracking here, cracking there. So when you see this, it means that there are explosive things inside can explode. It may not be things for fireworks. It may be something else. But the moment you see this sign on it, it means that it is explosive. So it might be handled carefully. There was explosion some time ago. It means that this sign was on the containers of those things. So I exploded. So how do I handle? So when you see this thing can explode, under what conditions will it be safe? So you have to make sure that those conditions are in place, strict adherence to instructions and rules will make learning chemistry beautiful, will create a safe environment for all of us. As we are dealing with hazard symbols, normal use, there could be some emergencies. Chemical concentrated chemical can spill out. We are using it. Lab technician is preparing it. All of a sudden, it pours on him. That's an accident. They will care without you knowing. So let's look at laboratory emergencies. What is this? Accident that could occur consciously or unconsciously during experiments or handling pieces of apparatus. So I have, I'm working with a test tube. All of a sudden, the test tube breaks. I'm working with conical flask. All of a sudden, the conical flask shatters or cracks. It's 
a laboratory emergency. And don't say that here we are talking about the laboratory, so it is a preserve of the lab. No, in your home, you can experience emergencies. Glass can easily shatter. Your plate, ceramic plate can easily shatter. And so on and so forth. So sudden contact with the concentrated acid that can cause burns is an example of a laboratory emergency. Sudden leakage of gas will make the benzene burner to produce sudden flame which causes scald. The fact that your home, you have never experienced these things doesn't mean they don't exist. They exist. And it's being experienced by others. That is why we are learning it. So that whenever we are handling these things in the lab, we will be careful. When we are handling chemical substances at home, we will be careful. So if that is the case, then we have to talk about first aid. So that when they occur, but there is no hospital in the lab. From the lab to the clinic, it's far. You have to walk. So what should we do at that point? So first aid. Provision of initial care for an illness or injury before medical treatment may be assessed. It happened to me before. I was washing glassware. All of a sudden, the glass got broken and it cut me. What shall I do? I have to walk to the school clinic. So I have to apply pressure on it so that I will not lose too much blood. So I was there alone. <laughs> so you can't cry to anybody, you can't report to anybody. But I know what to do. So press, I pressed it. I then went to the clinic. So the nurses will have to stitch out it. So the scar is still there. The day you see me face to face, I'll show it to you. <laughs> okay, so first aid. The importance of first aid, number one, preserves life. If I had not pressed it, that was first aid. So I pressed the source of the cat until I went to the clinic. So it preserved my life because there was no excess bleeding. Number two, prevent the condition of the casualty from deteriorating. So at that time, I was a casualty in my own world because there was nobody to help so the casualty himself is helping himself because he knew what to do in terms of laboratory emergency promote recovery so i pressed the place entered the clinic the place was stitched then i was fine So when we are in the lab and these things happen, it means that we will have to take responsibility. What is your responsibility in the lab? What is my responsibility in the lab? So keeping the laboratory safe is the responsibility of all the persons working in it. Everybody counts. Yes. The video on safety precautions, I said, Safety is triangular. So safety is at the center there. You are here. Environment there. And then others there. So everybody counts. Your neighbor counts. Yourself counts. Environment counts. So your safe action will affect me well. My safe action will affect you well. 
our safe action will affect environment well and the safety of the environment will also affect us well. Awareness and observation of safety rules. So you go and get that video on safety rules. Remove a lot of the danger of accident and make the laboratory a safe place for us to enjoy our chemistry. So carefulness. Follow instructions well. Don't be reckless when you are in the lab. However, if an accident occurs, the effect or harm that it may cause to our body's health and the environment should be known, managed, and minimized. So we have to know it is our responsibility. If this should happen, what should I do? I am using this one. Anything can happen. So we must always be careful. You can be holding glassware and then it will break in your hands. Because some of the glasswares are there, they are as old as the school itself. And they are in use. This is where carefulness comes in. Because the one, the story I told you earlier, I was just washing it. And it broke in my hands. You can just imagine. So what are our duties? Each person working in the laboratory has the following duties in case of an accident. No matter what, there may be an accident. It may be minimum. It may be major. But in all things, we have to prevent accident from occurring. But since we say the emergency, something is in normal use and anything can happen, we can't do without it. Number one, in case of an accident, your first duty is to assist the person who is hurt. So assist any casualties. In my case, I was there alone. So nobody was there to assist me. So I assisted myself because I knew what to do at that point of emergency. Number two, take appropriate steps to control the emergency. Who was there with me? No one. So I was myself. I have my own duty to take care of myself. So the emergency, the the glassware got broken in my hand, cut my hand. I have to do my own first aid. I have to, I am the casualty and I have to help myself. But when you are in a group, people will come to your aid and help you and control whatever emergency is okay. Let's say, for example, we are working and all of a sudden a glassware shatters on the floor. And then probably it cuts somebody. That person has become a casualty. So all others will come around him or her and take care of him. Some will sweep the broken glass walls on the floor. And then some also take care of him. Maybe lead him or her to the school clinic for the nurses to take care of him or her. Number three, avoid becoming casualty yourself. As the one sweeping the glassware, don't let it cut you. You have to be careful when you are sweeping. The glassware, you can't say that you are picking with your bare hand. No, you bring a broom. Bring a dustpan. Sweep it carefully and discard it carefully. Inform the appropriate authority that an accident has occurred. So in our school laboratory, who is the appropriate authority? Your teacher is there. The lab technician is there. So you inform them that an accident has occurred. There may be a direct 
witness. So they will come to your aid and make sure that you are safe. Because it is our responsibility to make sure that you are safe in the school laboratories. My final words to you. Each person working in the laboratory should understand that everybody's safe conduct affects all the others. And the environment also. Yes. So your safe conduct matters to me. So when you are in the lab, please act safely. Because one careless act or omission can lead to accident that may be fatal and destructive to many. This is to our instructors and our laboratory technicians. The fact that no accident has occurred in your lab before doesn't mean accident does not exist in your lab. There are hazardous materials. There are hazards in the lab. So congratulations that no accident has occurred over the years. But let's be conscious of it. Me, myself, I enjoy the lab a lot. I am involved in the lab activities a lot. Let's be conscious and make the lab a safe an interesting place for our students to come and enjoy chemistry. So, we have been looking at hazard symbols and their meanings. Wherever I see it, it's an indication how to handle, store the chemicals in that particular container. We talk about laboratory emergencies. Things in normal use can get out of hand. How do we prevent that? What is the first aid when an accident occurs? What is our responsibility in the lab? And what is my duty in case accident occurs? <laughs> this is Joy Learning with me, Wisdom Agresinyale, as with the one. It's been a great time with you. Get us on all social media platforms. Get the videos, watch them over and over and let it be in your blood as you begin to study chemistry. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.